Hello, this is John Adams again, and this is part two of the introduction to Photoshop for Beginners. So in this tutorial, we're going to go back over some of the things that we talked about in Photoshop when we were working on the rubber ducky <clears throat> and uh, compositing that onto the background of the water. So there was a couple things that I did not go over on the first tutorial that I'm going to go back over again is when you're making selections, uh, I didn't go over all the tools, but uh, let me go over these really quickly with you. So the rectangle uh, marquee tool, that selects within a rectangular area. So you can make that any size you want. So as you uh, create the selection areas, uh, it will add to it because of the fact that I have it in the add to option at the top. So this is the add to selection option. And in that option, uh, everything that you select will be added to that selection. Um, this is just every time you create a new selection it'll, or a selection, it will be created new. And normally we don't use that very often. I use the add to selection or the subtract from selection. And very seldom do I ever use the, um, the add or uh, the intersect with section. So um, that's just something we don't use that often so the subtract from selection is very uh, common but I always leave it in add to selection because of the fact that if you use the option key if you hold down the option key it you can see where it says minus it will um, subtract from your selection and it'll also toggle back and forth so if you want to select from something you can go like this and it'll take away from that selection so I'm going to deselect by using the command D control. Um, the other thing that you can uh, do is that you can use the other marquee tools to as you click over the uh, rectangular marquee you can use the elliptical. We hardly ever use the single row marquee or the single column marquee. That's very uh, uh, uncommon to use because it only takes one column and one row and that it's not very common to use. So but their uh, elliptical marquee is used quite often and you'll be using those in the future so you just select it and it shows up on your in your toolbox so uh, also uh, I'll go over some of the other selection tools uh, later with you but I'll give you a preview the lasso tool we talked about that before you can just drag and draw around something that you want which is pretty specific but it works really good to add to your selections uh, I'll use that later, but I'll deselect for now, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you with the uh, polygon lasso tool uh, how it works. So the polygon lasso t lasso tool works the best with um, geometric objects that have straight edges because if you click once, click, click, click with your mouse, you can select sp specific areas. If you hold the mouse key down, you can click and drag and see it turns it into the lasso tool and then it goes back to um, the other tool. And then the only thing that you need to know on this is that you really need to know that if you uh, drag around, it's going to keep uh, following you. It's like a rubber band. But if you find the very beginning a section where you started it'll show a little circle below the icon and that means you're closing that selection so every selection that you create you want to actually close that so I'm going to deselect this again and then um, on here the polygon last so tool that's uh, what we just showed and then the magnetic one this is another one that's really uh, very beneficial um, but you need to know how to use it properly so when you're using the magnetic lasso tool, it works really great, especially if you have um, textured backgrounds or you have uh, continuous tone in the background. But if you have a harder edge, it actually works better. But all you need to do is just drag along the edge and it copies the edge of your object, especially if you have some contrast between those. So you can see by this, I can actually do this. It takes a little bit longer than selecting the background. Now you can see little anchor points on here, and this is selecting really well because it has a white background. It's really easy to do. You do have to remember that you do need to go back to your um, starting point on here, and then it creates that little circle be below your um, tool. 
because if you don't do that, it's going to keep going and going and going, and you're going to say, I can't get rid of this thing. I'm holding my mouse key down when I'm doing this, but uh, it's just going to go like crazy. Same thing with the uh, polygon lasso tool. does the same thing. And if you get stuck in this mode, all you have to do is hold the um, command key down and click, and it'll close everything up, and then you can deselect and start over. So um, just remember when you start on something, like I'm going to do a real quick one here, just the head area that you need to go back to the very beginning to be able to uh, close this off. And that's what we want to do, close off this selection, okay? Uh, the same thing goes with the Polygon Lasso tool also is that you want to make sure that that you, when you get started, you know, you could try to start here. And if it's more of a sharp edge, it's a lot easier to go, or you can hold it, like I said, you can hold the Option key down and use the Lasso tool which is not going to be very accurate you can see by this so and then it switches back but it'll keep going too it'll just go all over the place and you'll go i can't get rid of this thing it's like a, a rubber band but you if you go back to the very beginning it'll close off if you don't know where you started just hold the command key down and click and it'll close it off and then you can deselect and start over okay so those are a couple of things uh, the other one is the um, quick selection tool Quick selection tool works a little bit different than the other selection tools. And how you can use that is you can click and drag within that area. And you can see how I can get the white area by just clicking and dragging with the mouse. And I got that area pretty well. If you do that on uh, the actual rubber ducky, you can see. And then I'll go over the eyes. And it adds to itself. Now I'm holding the mouse key down. I'm doing this. So it's really very quick and it's very good. So um, there's a lot of different uh, possibilities with that. I'm uh, in the uh, add to uh, selection right now. So not the new selection and not the subtract from selection. The add to because typically I add to that selection. There's a couple other things that you can see. This is the size of the tool. Uh, sample all layers so if you had other things and in different layers you could do you could sample from those and it will pick up things from the other layers um, auto enhance it automatically enhances the selection edge and then refine edge we'll use that later i'll show you how to use refine edge when we get to that point we're not quite at that yet so so that's uh, some more information about the selection tools those are the the three selection um, tools that are in here of course there's other tools below it but those are all the selection tools the other tools do different things such as the move tool and then we'll get down to the crop tool and do a few more things later and use some more of these tools as we progress through this uh, the introduction okay also a couple more things about the selection tools if you're not in the quick selection tool each tool has different controls so if you're in the uh, rectangle marquee tool you'll see at the top we have other um, capabilities I showed you the options on uh, selection uh, new selection add to selection subtract selection and then the intersection with selection I'll show you how that works too so it's just where they intersect, which, you know, it's hardly ever used, or I hardly ever use it, let's put it that way. But one of the other features is the feather. So your, your selections can be feathered, and what that does, it creates a transparent area around your selection, and that would mean around the area of your selection. So when you select something, when you paste it, it's going to have a little bit of a transparent area based on the amount of pixels that you set for this. So if I were to set this to 10, and I use this, you can see it'll, when you first select that area with the marquee selection tool, it'll look square, but then because of the fact that that's feathered, it'll round off the corner. So when I copy and paste that, it'll make it a little slightly transparent around that specific area, uh, 10 pixels worth, and you'll see the effects. And this is really important when we go into compositing images, but we'll get into that uh, later when we get into that part of the intro. So when we come back for part three of the introduction, we'll go back to the rubber ducky and the water background and how we can affect lighting and shadows 
and do some little tricky things to this rubber ducky to make it look like he belongs here. So look for part three.